introduced, I'm going to uh, briefly uh, present on smartly designed materials for selective electroanalytical applications. And today uh, I'm going to talk about first briefly introducing what sensors are, then host guest association using helixarine diaconone for amines and cations, of course, then antigen antibody detection for uh, uh, C-reactive protein detection with electrochemical luminescence uh, producing silica nanoparticles and sensitive sensing of DNA based on hybridization with ACL producing silica nanoparticle. Uh, then I skip this one. Then finally, uh, to determination of low level uh, dopamine on surface modified electrodes before I summarize my talk. And as you know, what sensors are uh, perform two very important functions. First, recognition, and second, transduction. Uh, recognition, if we recognize very selectively, then it will uh, eliminate all interfering uh, effects. And transduction, of course, uh, converts the characteristic parameters into a measurable signal, uh, generally uh, electrical or optical. And also uh, we have to have sensors uh, very selective and sensitive and size has to be small and robust. And I have a cartoon showing a desired sensor. And on your uh, left-hand side, I showed various shape and colors of a figure, which represents uh, different uh, ions or molecules. Then we have a selective recognition device, which is more ideal uh, device. And in this case, uh, it senses only red circle. Then transduction part gives a signal only from red circle and signals from all other shapes and colors are zero. So output only produce signal from a single uh, uh, species. And uh, there are various selective recognition method uh, uh, host guest chemistry, chemical complexation, uh, ABAG infection, uh, DNA conjugation, electrostatic detection, molecular imprinting, molecular beacon, apoenzyme, and other imaginative methods. And I'm going to uh, briefly introduce uh, four uh, different uh, categories uh, colored in red. Uh, first, host guest uh, interactions. And first, smartly designed material I'm going to introduce you today is calixarin uh, diaconone with esters. And calixarin has uh, four of uh, benzene ring molecules, uh, and there is a uh, uh, moiety on top and moieties on the bottom. And the synthesis of calixarin diaconone follows like this. A para-alkyl panel uh, produces, uh, actually sort of a little polymerization to, to form four. Uh, and sometimes we can produce uh, six or eight uh, moieties. Then finally, it goes, it goes to uh, a thallium compound with uh, TFA to form uh, calixarin diaconone diesters. And this compound, as you can see, it, it has very uh, interesting functions. The first is quinone on both sides. And the quinone, of course, can be electrochemically uh, reduced. 
while on the other side of the benzene rings has uh, two additional carbonyl oxygens. So there are four carbonyl oxygens in the molecule. And this cavity showing here uh, can accommodate positively charged cations because it has uh, uh, negative uh, dipoles on this uh, cavities. And in the presence of sodium, for instance, gives the electrochemical behavior shift to negative direction in red color, the while the blue color is the compound itself. In the presence of calcium, then it shifts even further with very complex electrochemical behavior. And in the case of lanthanum 3 plus, it shows of almost 1.1 volt or more negative than the first reduction potential of phenone. And also, uh, these four carbonyls are situated in tetrahedral positions. So it can accommodate ammonium ions or alkyl amines. Then these four carbonyls can form hydrogen bondings with uh, ammonia, for instance. And it also shift to the negative direction shown in red trace here. And also the potential shift depends on the groups, depending on the number of hydrogen bonding. In the case of ammonium ions, there are four hydrogen bondings. So interaction between the guest ammonium ion and host of calixanin diclinone is strongest. So the potential shifts almost 200 uh, millivolt, while primary amines, there are uh, three free uh, nitrogen hydrogen. So it forms second group of uh, potential shift. In the secondary amines, of course, shifts even less. And tertiary amine, no, no, not the uh, triple amine forms even uh, less, while quaternary amines, no interactions because uh, there is no hydrogen bonding formation between a uh, host and guest. And the mechanism can be shown like this host first electrochemically reduced to form host uh, radical in, for specific, but at the same time in the presence of gas ions, there is a chemical complexation between host and gas ions. And also the reduced product can form this one. So there that makes a whole circle and we call it uh, E0H and E0C for complex. Then uh, depending on K1 and K2 values, potential shifts either positive or negative direction. One distinctive example, for instance, is ferric ferrous ion and ferric ferrous ionized. The potential shift is very much. Then second example is antigen antibody interaction. And we all know that antigen antibody interaction is very specific and selective. In this example, I'm going to show how we utilize this very selective and strong interaction for uh, analytical applications. Uh, this shows the uh, structure of a human IgG and This again shows the uh, uh, structure. And the first, what we uh, did was on the gold surface, the cellular functionalized this uh, calixarin compound to form cellular groups, so attached on gold surface. And it has a little uh, uh, 
the ethereal cavity uh, to accommodate ammonium ions. So there is a lot of amine groups in proteins. So there is a large uh, uh, number of interaction between this compound and huge uh, proteins. So the schematic diagram of the sequence what we used for a specific analytical application is gold substrate, and we attach this primary uh, antibody on top of gold surface. Then antigen form a very uh, distinct interaction between antigen and antibody. Then in order to have a, a transduction signal, would we introduce a secondary antibody, which also form strong interaction with antigen. But in this case, we have a label. There is a label which produce a signal for our determination. In our specific example, we can use uh, ECL, electrochemical luminescence uh, method. And the sequence of synthetic process uh, is shown in this slide, but it is so chemical and perhaps it is not very interesting to all of you, but what I can say is what we introduce, the very small size of a silica nanoparticle encapsulated with ruthenium BP. Ruthenium BP, by the way, is one of very well-known ECL uh, producing uh, chemicals. And this uh, nano uh, silica surface. Nano silica is more like a, a glass, glass bead. And we surface modify this glass bead to form this amine functionality, which can attach to antibody. And this is the nano bead, the silica nanoparticles containing ruthenium BP and we can produce this in different sizes. And we produce from 20 nanometers to about 50, even 200 nanometers. Then we utilize this for uh, determination of uh, a C-reactive protein, CRP. And depending on the size of glass beads, we can have different amount of signal. For instance, if we use a smaller glass bead, then we have more GCL uh, intensity compared to a uh, larger glass bead. Of course, it is uh, very uh, reasonable because the small uh, glass bead has more surface area within a given amount. So the interaction of ECL is surface selective uh, interaction so that we produce, we have more uh, uh, ECL signals. Then a uh, third example is DNA conjugated silicon nanoparticles for ECL. And this time, instead of uh, utilizing uh, antigen antibody action, interaction, we utilize DNA uh, hydrogen bonding, DNA uh, uh, hybridizations. So uh, uh, ruthenium BP containing nanoparticles and we surface modify with amine functionality and this amine functionality can have additional interaction to form this probe DNA or probe, we call it probe one, probe two, then we keep continue this to form uh, more like a dendrite structures. So from here to another uh, nanoparticles, uh, surface modified nanoparticles. Then it is more like this. We have a capture DNA here, then this, hydrogen bonding formation between capture DNA and target DNA. Of course, the sequence of capture DNA and the 
the target DNA is initially well designed and synthesized. So each DNA moieties can form uh, hybridizations. Then we introduce this uh, ruthenium BP uh, containing uh, nanoparticles on top of this. Then we continue for double amplifications. So uh, we can uh, design this electrode surface with very smartly designed sequence of reactions to increase the uh, transduction signals. And as you can see here, single amplification shown in this blue trace here, this ECL intensity, and double amplification produce almost five times more uh, signal than uh, single amplification. We can continue to uh, keep uh, triple amplification, but there is a one limit. As we can see here, there is a static hindrance effect. So we cannot, we cannot go uh, further uh, to have more uh, ruthenium BP containing uh, nanoparticles. And uh, this uh, technique was utilized for the determination of uh, target DNA. And as you can see here, the concentration uh, starting from 10 to minus 11 small to 10 to minus 15 atom here, then we can see the linearity. Of course, this is a logarithmic scale all the way. And you, we have a very good uh, linearity and to show that this technique is very useful uh, for the determination of uh, target DNAs. And the final example I'm going to introduce you today is determination of low level or dopamine on charged multi-world carbon nanotube. And this uh, dopamine uh, is uh, one of the key phys physiological molecule for our life. And if it has very uh, limited uh, amount, then it produce Parkinson's disease while of course, the sequence of this dopamine is uh, act is between synapses and neurons to uh, signal transmitting from one side, one cell to the other cell. And if there are excess uh, dopamines, then uh, we have uh, uh, schizophrenia uh, problems. So it is very, very important physiological compound. And if we can have a very uh, sensitive detection technique to diagnose in very early stage of these diseases, then we have more chance to cure this uh, very disastrous uh, disease. And surface uh, treatment technique is shown in this uh, uh, figure. And first is a polymer gel entrapment, uh, surface adsorption, and covalent bonding, and electrostatic interaction. What we are, uh, what I'm going to introduce today is uh, electrostatic interactions instead of uh, this. Uh, more uh, complicated uh, techniques. And there is a charge code to the multi-world carbon donor too. And when we treat the multi-world carbon nanotube with citric acid, then we have a negatively charged functionality on the surface of multi-world carbon nanotube. On the other side, when we treated with polyethylene imine, we have a positive amine groups functionalized carbon, uh, multi-world carbon nanotubes. 
And after we introduce these chemicals on a glassy carbon electrode, we heat it up to uh, evaporate the solutions. Then we have uh, uh, either uh, citric acid treated or polyethylene imine treated uh, glass uh, carbon uh, electrode. And the, the, the surface uh, morphology can be seen here. This is just a simple multi world carbon nanotube. And when we treated citric acid or polyethylene imine, we have additional NH functionality here or carbonyl uh, functionality as observed in a Fourier transform infrared, while this uh, same images uh, is almost very uh, similar. Then we characterize this charged multi world carbon nanotube. Uh, first, we check the uh, contact angle and surface energy energies. And since the multi world carbon nanotube has a function, additional functionality on it, the hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity changes. So the, the contact angle uh, changes. And the electrochemical uh, uh, technique is shown on here. This uh, dotted line is multi world carbon nanotube on glassy carbon, as you see here. But when we treat it with PE, I on multi world carbon nanotube, we have a bigger signal here and less signal on this side. And of course, uh, the citric acid treated ones in shown in blue trace shows a higher uh, electrochemical signal uh, compared to uh, the other one. And uh, differential pulse voltammogram shows more uh, clearly on this effect. And dopamine with uh, electrochemical uh, uh, peak on dopamine on citric acid treated uh, multi world carbon nanotube has a very uh, enhanced signal, while PEI has uh, uh, on the other side uh, for. Uh, 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 ascorbic acid. And of course, dopamine and ascorbic acid is very difficult to distinguish on bare glass carbon, as you can see here, only a broad uh, uh, signal. Then dopamine and excess uh, ascorbic acid, you can see with the uh, uh, differential pulse uh, with the citric acid treated multi world carbon nanotube has very clear uh, peak and detection limit on PI treated one has a very large number, but citric acid treated one for the detection limit of dopamine is much, much less than PEI treated ones. And also compared to the intact multi world carbon nanotube. And the uric acid, of course, is another interfering uh, chemicals for the uh, for physiological fluid. And in the presence of ascorbic acid, dopamine and uric acid shows uh, this kind of behavior. But in the CA treated uh, uh, multi world carbon nanotube, in the presence of huge amount of uric acid or ascorbic acid we can still determine very sensitively for uh, dopamine uh, without any interfering effect. And the summary of my talk is uh, among various selective recognition methods, host guest infections and antigen antibody infection, DNA conjugation and charge induced infection are uh, discussed today. And host guest uh, chemistry is based on calixarin, diaclonone, 
with cations eh, or alkylamines shift electrochemical potentials to negative directions, more charge on cations, or the number of hydrogen bonds between amine hydrogen and carbonyl oxygen of the host certainly increase the degree of association, thus the shift of potential. Antigen antibody interaction is utilized to determine the amount of CRP in the sample and negatively charged citrate coated multi-world carbon nanotube modified electrode show the highly sensitive determination of dopamine at the neurophysiological level in the presence of millimolar level of ascorbic acid and uric acid. And it is very useful to early diagnosis of neurological diseases. The limited detection value in this example showed 4.2 nanomole for dopamine at citric acid treated carbon or nanotube on glassy carbon is one of the lowest value uh, published so far. And smartly designed materials provide additional uh, sensitivity for electrochemical sensing and ions or biomolecules. And the people uh, worked with me for the uh, last decades are uh, shown here, and I really appreciate them for their very uh, hard working. And thank you uh, very much for your kind attention. Thank you.